behind the scenes curses, tragic accidents, and a bizarre cameo in the worst movie of all time. Horror movie death tolls don't always end when the credits roll. The most famous horror movie in history also suffered from one of the most famous horror movie curses. William Friedkin's blockbuster The Exorcist follows a young girl possessed by a demonic entity. Controversial at the time, The Exorcist shocked audiences with its horrific effects and profane dialogue. Audience members reported fainting, shortness of breath, vomiting, and spiritual and psychological trauma, making the film a word-of-mouth sensation leading to lines around the block. I don't want to see it, but my curiosity is killing me. I have to see it. Aside from the on-screen horrors, The Exorcist is associated with nine deaths, including two actors who appeared in the film before passing away shortly after. Jack McGowan, who plays the alcoholic director Burke Dennings, died of complications of the flu on January 30th, 1973, nearly a year before the film's December release. Just 10 days later, Basiliki Malieros, who plays Father Karras' elderly mother, died of natural causes. Both McGowan and Malieros were older actors, and their deaths, while tragic, are arguably a simple part of life. More horrific, however, was the movie's troubled production. A mysterious fire destroyed part of the set, a convicted murderer appears as an extra, and Friedkin's directorial style led to stressful and dangerous working conditions. For example, in an attempt to bring a sense of genuine discomfort to his actors' performances, Friedkin refrigerated the set and arranged for a gun to fire at random intervals. He also infamously injured both Linda Blair and Ellen Burstyn by ordering his stunt operators to vigorously jerk their harnesses during filming. Stephen King's Pennywise is largely credited with the recent waves of callrophobia sweeping the nation, but another cinematic clown may be even more terrifying. Sid Haig stars in Rob Zombie's Firefly trilogy as Captain Spaulding, the patriarch of a murderous family who delights in torturing tourists who wander into their roadside attraction. Haig was set to star in the third Firefly film, Three from Hell, but ill health forced Zombie to reduce his role dramatically. Rather than replace him entirely, however, he rewrote the story to offer Captain Spaulding a satisfying arc, later telling Consequence. I had already spoken to Sid about how important it was for him to be in this movie, and it was important to me. It was important to him. It was important to the fans. Haig died of a lung infection on September 21st, 2019, just five days after Three From Hell premiered. R&B sensation Aaliyah was only 22 when she was killed in a plane crash on August 25th, 2001, after returning from a video shoot in the Bahamas. The young Dynamo began her music career at just 12 years old, when she transitioned from singing in church to performing with the legendary Gladys Knight. Aaliyah released her first hit album, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number, in 1994, at the age of 15. She followed this release with two more platinum albums and five Grammy nominations in just seven years. Aaliyah began acting alongside her musical career and starred opposite martial arts superstar Jet Li in the action love story, Romeo Must Die. She had just wrapped production on her sophomore film, Queen of the Damned, before she boarded her doomed flight. Queen of the Damned is an adaptation of Anne Rice's third novel in her wildly popular Vampire Chronicles. The film has gone on to achieve camp classic status, but will forever be known as the R&B goddess's final on-screen performance and a cruel reminder of the star she might have been. Of all the iconic horror characters in Hollywood history, few are as recognizable as Bela Lugosi's Count Dracula. Born in 1882, Lugosi began acting in his native Hungary before immigrating to the United States. In 1927, he debuted the role that would make him famous, appearing for the first time as Count Dracula on a Broadway stage, and later in Todd Browning's 1931 film adaptation, Dracula. From there, he became a mainstay in the burgeoning world of horror, quickly cementing his reputation as one of the genre's all-time greats. Listen to them. Children of the night. What music they make. Lugosi's final on-screen appearance in Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space is famous for an entirely different reason, however. Wood was notorious in the industry for his incompetence as a director and the often comical awfulness of his films. Plan 9 is a particularly egregious example of this, being wildly considered as the worst movie ever made. Lugosi's scenes had actually been shot for another movie, and they were shoehorned into Plan 9 by Wood, adding to the movie's near nonsensical energy. Additional scenes were filmed with a stand-in who spends the rest of the film hunching over and covering his face. Still, at least Lugosi never had to worry about Plan 9. He had died in 1956, three years before it was filmed and released. One of Hollywood's most tragic examples of a bright career cut short is the death of Brandon Lee. Son of martial arts legend Bruce Lee, the 28-year-old actor had just landed his breakout role in Alex Proya's The Crow. Lee played Eric Draven, a murdered musician who was resurrected by a mysterious crow to avenge the death of his fiancée. The shoot had been plagued with problems, 
including accidents, injuries, cut corners, and destruction. But nothing could compare with the tragedy to come. Towards the end of production, Lee was filming a pivotal scene in which his character is shot by intruders upon returning to his apartment. In a cruel twist of fate, the prop gun fired a real bullet into Lee's abdomen. Lee's death was ultimately ruled an accident, resulting from a failure to properly clean the gun's barrel. The cast and crew banded together to finish the project as a tribute to Lee. Despite macabre rumors, footage of his death was not used in the final cut and has been locked away for decades. Proyas completed the film using extra footage, stand-ins, and CGI to recreate Lee's image in a few key scenes. The Crow premiered to rave reviews and praise for its leading man, a haunting reminder of what could have been. Despite her iconic performance as Ty in Amy Heckerling's Clueless, Brittany Murphy was anything but ditzy. After moving to LA at the age of 14, Murphy won her breakout role in Drexel's class, followed by overnight stardom in the Alicia Silverstone classic. She soon impressed audiences with a number of scene-stealing performances in other movies. Though Murphy's star was on the rise, her personal life was in turmoil. Rising to fame during the heyday of TMZ, Murphy was a frequent target of gossip bloggers like Perez Hilton, with unfounded rumors constantly circulating about her mental stability, drug addiction, and eating disorders. Following a series of public engagements, Murphy met and quickly married screenwriter Simon Monjack, whom many friends and colleagues worried was controlling and manipulative. Months after filming wrapped on the psychological thriller Something Wicked, Murphy collapsed in her LA home and was rushed to the hospital. She later succumbed to a combination of pneumonia and iron deficiency. The shock of losing such a young woman to a preventable disease, combined with bizarre behavior from her mysterious husband, ignited a rash of conspiracy theories. Though Murphy had completed her work on Something Wicked, post-production suffered numerous delays, including outdoor reshoots continually rescheduled due to unpredictable weather. The low-budget film received a small release on April 4, 2014, more than four years after the death of its most famous star. When most fans think of John Carpenter's Halloween, they picture legendary final girl Laurie Strode and the iconic killer Michael Myers. However, Michael's psychiatrist, Dr. Sam Loomis, is just as crucial to the franchise's legacy. Played by acclaimed British actor Donald Pleasance, Loomis is a doctor determined to keep his most dangerous patient from killing again. What was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Despite his horror cred, Pleasance got his start in more dramatic roles. After working steadily for years on the British stage and then in film and TV, he landed his breakthrough role in The Great Escape, a World War II film chronicling the miraculous escape of Allied prisoners of war. Pleasance appeared in four additional entries in the Halloween franchise as a long-suffering doctor. Considering his character's appeal, Pleasance later told Fangoria, I've tended to play Loomis with a light touch, not totally comedic, but in a manner that fits with these films' attention to suspense and tension. Pleasance died of complications from heart surgery on February 2, 1995, seven months before the release of Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. The beloved actor lives on in the franchise, however, as a recreation of the character appears in the 2021 movie Halloween Kills. Of all the losses connected to the so-called poltergeist curse, few are as heartbreaking and senseless as the murder of Dominique Dunn, the youngest child of a prominent Hollywood family. Dunn began acting on stage and television. Dunn's first major film was Poltergeist, the story of a family haunted by the spirits lurking within their suburban home. The terrifying film was a hit, and Dunn seemed poised for a wildly successful career. Then, on October 30th, 1982, just months after the film's release, Dunn was studying lines at home when her ex-boyfriend John Sweeney knocked at the door. Dunn had recently ended the relationship due to his violent and controlling behavior, and he had apparently come to win her back. The conversation did not go as planned. Sweeney attacked Dunn, leaving her alive but unresponsive. Rushed to the hospital, she remained on life support for five days before finally passing away surrounded by her family. Sweeney was subsequently convicted of manslaughter and served two and a half years in jail. While Dunn's death is often connected to a curse said to shadow the iconic film, the real curse her murder highlights is a legacy of violence against women and a legal system that too often fails to deliver justice. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.